For the 50% of Americans who wear glasses, getting a new pair can be pricey. For the cost of a single pair, they could pay a month's rent in any of these one-bedroom apartments, buy a month's worth of food for two people, or buy a round-trip flight from New York to Reykjavik and still have money to spare. And that's without lenses. Add the cheapest lenses available and the price jumps by another $200. Granted, this is the most expensive pair we could find on the LensCrafters website, and we didn't input insurance information. Still, the average price of glasses in the US is in the hundreds, $238 for frames, $113 for lenses, and $201 for an exam. Insurance can help bring down the cost, but it's still a lot for a few pieces of plastic. And they don't have to cost this much. Recently, two former industry executives revealed to a Los Angeles Times columnist that quality frames could cost as little as $4 to make, and designer frames a mere $15. So why the huge markups? A possible explanation could be the consolidated nature of the industry. According to a 2019 IBIS World Report, the top four companies operating in the U.S. account for over 60% of industry revenue, following a decade of mergers and acquisitions. The biggest of them, Luxottica, has 40%. The Italian company is the largest maker of eyewear in the world. In the US, it captures huge shares of both the prescription eyeglasses and sunglasses retail market, owns several major retailers, has exclusive manufacturing and licensing deals with tons of designer labels, and owns iMed, one of the largest vision insurance providers. A Luxottica spokesperson told CNBC that the glasses industry is very diverse, including several discount retailers like Walmart and Costco. This is true. The same Ibis World report noted that the vast majority of consumers prefer value eyewear from such stores. Still, with such large market shares and diverse holdings, it's worth examining this one company's power. And in 2017, Luxottica announced it would get even bigger by merging with Essilor, a French lenses manufacturer. The $49 billion deal further consolidated the eyewear industry, leading some to ask, will this help consumers or hurt them? Leonardo Del Vecchio founded Luxottica in Italy in 1961. The name is a combination of the Italian words for light and optics, and the company manufactured components and accessories for the optical industry. But Del Vecchio soon transformed the company from supplier to manufacturer. In 1971, Luxottica debuted its first house-made glasses line. This turned out to be a prescient move. Starting in the 1980s, glasses slowly transformed from a necessary medical device to a fashion statement for the face. Luxottica both drove and capitalized off this trend by partnering with designer brands to make lines of glasses and sunglasses. Under these licenses, the fashion houses send inspiration to Luxottica, which designs and manufactures the frames. The company first partnered with Giorgio Armani in 1988. 30 years later, its roster of partnerships sounds like a fashion week unto itself. Prada, Chanel, Burberry, Michael Kors, Ralph Lauren, Tiffany, Versace, Bulgari, and on and on. Luxottica also purchased several brands outright, like Vogue Eyewear, Ray-Ban, and Oakley. And they moved into retailing, buying Lens Crafters, Sunglass Hut, and Cole National, which is the parent company of Target Optical, Sears Optical, and Pearl Vision. In total, Luxottica has about 9,000 stores worldwide. And that's not all. Their vision insurance company, iMed, has a network of 28,000 eye health professionals and covers 39 million people. And that's still not all. We're focusing on the US, but Luxottica has a major presence in the UK, New Zealand, Australia, Latin America, and of course, its native Italy, as well as manufacturing facilities in the US, Italy, China, Brazil, and two small plants in Japan and India. In 2018, Luxottica had net sales of just under 9 billion euros. That's about 10 billion US dollars, and an increase of 22% since 2013. To put it simply, if a brand wants to sell glasses, they want to be in Luxottica's huge network of stores. And if a store wants to sell popular brands, they'll want to offer Luxottica products. You know, Ray-Ban, Chanel, Bulgari, and the like. Some argue that Luxottica's disproportionate size and power stifles competition, causing the whole industry to stagnate. 
The profits in this industry are uh, relatively obscene. There hasn't been any serious innovation in the industry. I mean, Google Glass might be the best example, but they're pretty uh, far from uh, getting into it. And so this, this industry just sort of sits there, and it makes a lot of money, and it is, uh, I would suggest, stagnant and uh, extracts the cost of billions of dollars from uh, American and actually just global consumers. Some competitors have managed to succeed. Zenni Optical, an online-only glasses retailer, began in 2003 and sells glasses for as little as $6.95, lenses included. Another company, Warby Parker, began selling glasses starting at $95 in 2010. We each had that frustrating experience of losing a pair of glasses and break, or breaking a pair of glasses and then not understanding why they cost several hundred dollars. Dave left a $700 pair of glasses in the seat pocket uh, of an airplane. Um, we thought that was just way too much money to spend on a pair of glasses, technology that's been around about 800 years. And uh, we looked in uh, to the market and saw this massive industry that really had been overcharging consumers for, for decades. Warby became so popular that it opened its first physical store in 2013, and they've since opened about 90 more. Companies like Zenni and Warby prove that glasses don't have to be so expensive. They also drive innovation. Warby Parker even uses technology that allows consumers to do their own eye exam using a computer and a phone app. The company says these prescriptions are reviewed by an eye doctor within a day, removing an actual eye checkup as a barrier to getting glasses. But some optometrists worry that this method oversimplifies prescriptions and puts consumers at risk of getting a faulty product. The problem with ordering glasses online always comes down to two things, and that is patient health and patient safety. And obviously, if you can sit down in front of your computer uh, and with a few keystrokes, have a pair of glasses ordered, that is gonna save you time. But at what expense? Dr. Pierce told CNBC that some glasses ordered online may not conform to U.S. safety standards. Imagine lenses so thin that they shatter under the slightest pressure. And one study by the American Optometric Association found that 29% of 154 glasses ordered from online retailers had at least one lens with an incorrect prescription, a problem that can lead to headaches, eye strain, dizziness, and more. The study did not specify from which online retailers the defective glasses were purchased. But worse, Dr. Pierce worries that consumers will take an online prescription as license to not get regular eye checkups. During the course of an eye exam, a lot of things can be revealed that would otherwise never be detected. For example, the diagnosis of glaucoma, cataracts, macular degeneration, even things like dry eye and allergies. And in very, very rare cases, brain tumors have been diagnosed during the course of an eye exam. So that's deceiving to consumers to, to have the impression that they've received an eye exam when all they've had is a rudimentary refraction online to determine refractive error, and even then, not very accurately. Warby Parker doesn't claim its digital prescription check is a substitute for an eye health exam. They even say so in this video that explains the process. Prescription check is not a comprehensive eye exam, and it isn't meant to replace visits to your eye doctor. But we do think that telemedicine increases access and can be a great complement. Often incumbents in an industry uh, can be resistant to change or scared of it. At the end of the day, um, technology is changing. You can either bury your head in the sand and ignore it um, or embrace it and create uh, ways to increase access to healthcare. And that's what our hope is. Dr. Pierce's concerns aren't yet too widespread, given that a tiny percent of glasses overall are purchased online. The vast majority of consumers buy glasses from large discount chains, like Luxottica's Target or Sears. Other walk-in chains, like Luxottica's Lens Crafters or Sunglass Hut, or doctor's offices, like one of the 28,000 in Luxottica's iMed insurance network. And since 89% of the products sold in Luxottica stores are manufactured by Luxottica, the odds are even better that you'll buy frames made by Luxottica, even if they're branded with Chanel, Tiffany, or Prada. And Luxottica is about to get even bigger. The United States Federal Trade Commission approved the merger in March 2018, but some antitrust experts question if the review was enough. And I see these prices and I still think something's wrong in this market. That competition is not working in the market. And the idea that you can have a merger that brings together um, the largest manufacturer of lenses um, and, and the retailer makes some of the most best-selling frames, it seems to me that that merger would be entrenching power. 
Professor Fox and her colleague Scott Hemphill told CNBC that the FTC tends to be more sympathetic to vertical mergers, that is, mergers between two companies at different areas of the supply chain. In this case, Luxottica makes and sells frames, whereas Essilor makes and sells lenses. Vertical mergers are a tricky area because on the one hand, combining a customer and a supplier can be pro-competitive. It can bring important efficiencies that benefit uh, consumers and society more generally. At the same time, vertical mergers under certain circumstances can be anti-competitive. And so the trick is to figure out which transactions are anti-competitive and which ones are pro-competitive. The FTC uses economic models to guess whether a merger will help or harm consumers. Basically, whether prices of the product will go up or down. Maybe that analysis is impeccable, but it's very narrow. And they should at least have considered that the merger might have prevented the firms from lowering prices. It might have entrenched a structure that kept competition from breaking out. As part of their A Better Deal policy proposals, Senate Democrats condemned the Essilor Luxottica merger as an example of corporate consolidation gone too far. Eyeglasses are a necessity for many Americans, but due to consolidation and concentration in the supply chain, they are increasingly difficult to afford. It's worth noting that the eyewear industry in the U.S. was riddled with accusations of excessive markups and monopolistic behavior long before Luxottica. Luxottica has not faced the same scrutiny. In fact, its merger with Essilor has been approved by trade commissions around the world. Its size and markups are not an anomaly, but a modern iteration of what's long been an industry standard. Luxottica did not respond to a request for an interview in time, but a spokesperson did speak with CNBC about the company's methods and pricing. It's fair to say that, while two pairs of frames may both be made of plastic and even look similar, they can be vastly different in terms of durability, fit, and comfort. Our frames are made from high-quality materials in our own factories under the highest standards. Most consumers can't spend several thousand dollars on a Prada handbag, but for $300 they can own a pair of Prada sunglasses. The approximately 74 million baby boomers are reaching the years at which the vast majority of individuals need vision correction, and Medicare doesn't cover routine eye exams, glasses, or contact lenses. Maybe their children or grandchildren will cajole them into trying Zenni Optical or Warby Parker. If not, Essilor Luxottica stands to gain quite a bit in the coming decades. Everybody doesn't have to buy luxury glasses. Uh, you don't need Ray-Bans but there's a lot of room in between where there ought to be competition and you're not seeing it.